When it comes to wiring in float switches or safety switches off of condensate pumps into the low voltage circuits of HVAC systems, there is one common way that a lot of guys do it that I'm going to show you today. It's very easy to do, but there are also circumstances in which the most common way to do it is not always the best way to do it, and we're going to cover some of those circumstances as well. I also broke the video down into different chapters, so feel free to skip around to whatever might apply to you. So what we're looking at here is a control board inside of an air handler or a furnace, and we have our thermostat terminals. We're gonna start off with a battery powered thermostat here. And so here's the idea. The 24 volts begins on our R terminal here, right on the control board. And the idea is that 24 volts is sent up to our thermostat's R terminal from the control board R terminal. And when the thermostat calls for cooling mode, it'll send that same 24 volts back out on the Y terminal. If it calls for heating mode, it'll send it out on the W terminal and so forth. Now, what most guys do when they're wiring in a float switch or a pan switch or a safety switch on a condensate pump is they will, instead of running the 24 volts straight from the control board up to the thermostat, what they'll do is they'll divert it over to the float switch itself. Now, these two wires, it doesn't matter which way you wire it. You can switch them around. It doesn't matter. Um, the 24 volts will go through the float switch or the condensate pump, and then they send it up to the R terminal and the thermostat. So basically what this does is if we have a water condition where we're not getting drainage, the water is backing up, um, the float switch will activate and it will not allow the 24 volts from the control board to make it to the R terminal in our thermostat. And if our thermostat can't get 24 volts on the R terminal, it can't send out a signal on cooling or heating or whatever the case may be. And we don't want our system to continue generating water when we have a water problem. Now, 95% of the time, this is perfectly acceptable way to do it. Um, in most circumstances, it's usually the best way to do it. But there are some circumstances in which this is not really ideal. So one of those circumstances, let's get rid of the battery powered, all right? And let's say we have a smart thermostat now. So we have 24 volts going up to our, our terminal on our thermostat. We have a common wire coming back from our thermostat to the control board. And this is basically our charging circuit here. Now, if we were to cut off the 24 volts to the R terminal on our thermostat on a water condition with our float switch, we're not just disabling the thermostat's ability to run the cooling system so that we no longer generate water. We are also disabling the thermostat's ability to charge its battery. So what ends up happening here is that we end up with a dead thermostat. Now, this really isn't all that big of a deal, but the minor disadvantage of wiring in a float switch the way we first showed you here is that if you do end up with a dead thermostat either it might not come on right away when you fix the water problem or even if it does you can lose functionality of the thermostat for a while until it fully charges back up again which in some cases can take a full day sometimes it takes a while for these things to charge uh, you might lose wi-fi ability or you know other smart features so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you a better way on a smart thermostat with a common wire on it is to actually actually break the cooling signal coming back from the thermostat. So what this would look like is we would take the wire coming off of our Y terminal on our thermostat, and instead of going straight into the control board with it, what we're gonna do is run it through the float switch come back out and then go to the control board. So what we're doing here is we're keeping our charging circuit intact for the smart thermostat so that we're not killing the power on a high water situation, but we're not allowing the thermostat to activate cooling mode to generate more water. Now, if you have a smart thermostat without a common wire on it it's like a power stealing thermostat that charges off of cooling and heating modes um, unfortunately there's no way to wire in a safety switch on a condensate pump or a float switch that isn't eventually going to kill the battery on the on the thermostat uh, whether you kill the power coming to the thermostat on that r wire or kill it going back on the yellow wire either way you're not going to have a charging circuit available and it's unavoidable but if you do have a common wire this is the preferred method right here. Now, this is also a preferred method if, uh, say, you live somewhere like Arizona where you might be using heating and cooling certain times of the year within the same 24-hour period. So, for example, if it's warm enough in the day to run your air conditioning system, but it gets cool enough at night, 
that you might have to use a little bit of heat, this is also the most ideal way to wire these switches in, whether you have a smart thermostat or not. And the reason why is because we will still be able to run our heating off of this arrangement, even if our cooling can't run on a water problem. Whereas if we were to kill power on that 24 volts coming up to the thermostat, we wouldn't be able to run heating or cooling, even though our heating doesn't generate any water. Now, I would also add that breaking this Y signal between the thermostat and the control board would also be an ideal way to do it if you have a heat pump system. The problem with the heat pump system is we break that R wire between the control board and the thermostat. We're not just disabling both heating and cooling mode. What we're also disabling is emergency heat mode. So breaking that 24 volt signal on the Y between the thermostat and the system itself will kill both heating and cooling mode in a heat pump system, but it still will allow you to run emergency heat. So the circumstance I want to cover now is if we have a high efficiency furnace. So a high efficiency furnace generates water in heating mode. Now, normally the wiring on this type of system, you will have your 24 volts going up to the R terminal on your thermostat, and you have your white wire coming back from W to activate heating mode at the W terminal on the control board. Now, if you have a battery powered thermostat, interrupting this 24 volts between the R terminals would be perfectly fine. So we can just run our power to the switch from the switch up to the R terminal thermostat and leave the W wire to the control board as is. So now let's talk about a smart thermostat um, with a common wire attached to it. So what we're gonna have here is 24 volts going up to our R terminal on our thermostat. We will have a common wire coming back to our control board to complete our charging circuit. And we will have our heating wire to the W terminals between the thermostat and the control board. So. Once again, we want to retain our charging circuit, so we're not going to break that uh, 24 volts up to our thermostat between the R terminals. What we're going to do instead is break our heating wire. So we are just so going to break our white wire coming off the W terminal thermostat, running it through our float switch or our condensate pump, and then running it back to W on the control board. And so we're maintaining our charging circuit, but we're not allowing heating mode to run to generate water. Um, which a high efficiency furnace does in heating mode. Now, one situation I want to cover that's a little bit off the reservation here, but if you have a high efficiency furnace with an evaporator coil sitting on top of it and you have a smart thermostat with a common wire, okay? So this, uh, most guys, what they're going to do here is just, they're still going to break that 24 volts between the R terminals and that's perfectly acceptable. But if you don't want to kill that charging circuit on the thermostat, uh, there is a way to go about doing it using a 90-340 relay. So I'm going to show you guys this now. Um, I will be perfectly honest with you. I don't think I've ever seen anybody do this, but this is the sort of thing I would do if that's my setup. So to begin, we have our 24 volts coming off our R terminal, going up to our thermostat. We have our common coming back to complete our charging circuit to common on the control board. And we have our heating circuit coming back to our W and our cooling circuit from Y to Y. All right, so this is gonna be our wiring arrangement. I didn't include the green wire because it's just gonna get cluttered, but this is going to be the heating and cooling arrangement for the furnace and the air conditioning. So what I would do as far as a relay goes to retain our charging circuit for a thermostat, but we also wanna be able to kill both heating and cooling cycles on this. So we can't use a two wire switch like this to break two different uh, circuits here, Y and W. So what we're gonna do instead is this. We're going to run one of these wires on our float switch or our condensate pump safety switch, and we're gonna splice right off that R terminal and send it to our switch. We're gonna keep the 24 volts going up to our, our terminal on our thermostat. We're going to take the other end of this and we're going to go into the charging coil on our relay. The other side of this charging coil on our relay, we are going to wire that back to common on our control board. 
So basically the idea here is we're creating a bypass power circuit. So we're maintaining our charging circuit for our smart thermostat and we're creating a secondary circuit with our float switch um, activating a relay that is back to common. So as long as the float switch is okay, as long as we have a normal water level, everything's okay, we're gonna have 24 volts running through this switch. It is going to power the coil on this relay and we're gonna have the, between terminals one and three on this relay that are normally open are actually gonna be closed because we're gonna have 24 volts running through this coil. So what we're gonna do is we're going to run our yellow to one side of this coil. We're gonna run the other back to Y. And we're gonna do the same thing with our W. We're gonna run it to the other coil um, and then back to W again. So what's going to happen here is when this float switch activates, it is going to discharge this coil and our normally open contacts that are closed on a charge coil are going to reopen. And that is going to interrupt the Y signal back to the control board. It'll interrupt the W signal uh, back to the control board. And so we will not be able to run heating or cooling mode through this relay if this float is activated but we still maintain our charging circuit now i know that seems pretty confusing to you guys um, and it's not something that's typically done out there but just look at it as this creative finale to the video if that's something you want to explore and look into there it is but otherwise just breaking 24 volts between the two r terminals is perfectly fine that's it thanks for watching